Living cells can sense and respond to diverse inputs in sophisticated ways. A major question in systems biology is how the biochemical networks within cells yield these behaviors. An example of an important biological behavior is adaptation. In adaptation, cells respond to the presence of an input, but then automatically reset themselves back to their basal state. Adaptation limits the time of activation and also allows the cells to respond to further increases in input. This is a fundamental property of many sensory systems. Vision is an example of an adaptive sensory system. On a bright sunny day, uh, when you first walk out, the big increase in light just overwhelms you and you can't see for a little bit. But after a short while, your eyes reset themselves so that you can now see under these new brighter ambient conditions. Bacterial chemotaxis is another classic example of sensory adaptation. By adapting to new ambient concentrations of chemoattractant, the bacterium can recognize further increases in the attractant. This allows the cell to continuously swim up a gradient. But how do biochemical circuits within the cell yield adaptation? When we study cells that show adaptation, one often discovers very complex biochemical circuits that are difficult to understand. It can be challenging to identify the key elements that are responsible for adaptation. In the current study, we have taken an alternative approach, asking what are all possible enzymatic circuits that can achieve adaptation, an attempt to map the relationship between network space and function space. So typically we take a cell that shows a behavior of interest, say adaptation, and then we try to dissect what is the chemical path, the biochemical pathway that allows a cell to achieve this behavior. But here we've taken a different approach. We've asked an inverse question. We've asked what are all possible network architectures or circuits that can achieve adaptation? We have carried out this computational search using a simplified library of circuits. We start with an input node that can receive signals, an output node that can transmit outputs, then we also include a third regulatory node. All three nodes can have positive or negative relationships with one another, as well as positive or negative self-regulatory loops. This yields a total of 16,000 possible three-node network topologies. For each of these network architectures, we sample their behavior with 10,000 different parameter sets. In this huge space of circuits, are there many unrelated circuits that can achieve adaptation? Or are there really just a limited set that can do this? What we found is that of the 16,000 possible networks, only about 300 are capable of robustly performing adaptation. That is to say that they can achieve this behavior with diverse parameter values. Moreover, we find that all of these 300 solutions cluster to just two major circuit families. The first family comp comprises negative feedback loops in which feedback is controlled by a regulatory node that plays a buffering role to limit pathway output. Specific kinetic parameters are required for the buffering node. The second family of adaptive circuits comprises incoherent feedforward loops in which the regulatory node acts as a proportioner. The regulatory node inactivates the output node in proportion to the degree to which it is activated by the input node. Again, this circuit requires specific parameter values to yield a proportioner node. I think it's fascinating to think that there are really only a few ways to achieve adaptation. Our work suggests that across highly diverse biological systems, evolution will repeatedly converge on the same solutions. This gives us hope that there may exist simple, general principles in the apparently very complex biochemical networks. This work suggests ways in which we can classify and recognize functional modules within complex natural circuits. Since many diseases involve loss of proper homeostasis or adaptation, this work also suggests ways in which adaptation circuits could be modulated to restore function and treat disease. 
Finally, this work may provide a guide for the design of synthetic cellular circuits capable of adaptation.